Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday the 21st of November. First video emerges of workers stuck in Uttarkashi tunnel brings hope to families. India-Australia hold foreign ministers framework dialogue. An activist flags concern over fake encounters in Balochistan. And now for all the details. In a major development, rescuers on Tuesday released the first video footage of the workers who are trapped inside the Silkyara tunnel in India's Uttarkashi for more than 10 days. Rescue team on Monday pushed through a 6-inch wide pipeline through the rubble of the collapsed tunnel to supply larger quantities of food and other essentials to the 41 workers. The trapped workers are safe, authorities said, with access to light oxygen, dry food, water and medicines already being sent by a smaller pipe. The family members of nine of the 41 men have also reached the site to get some updates. पहले से आज बहुत अलग है आज पूरा साफ आवाज आ रहा था और मतलब सब कुछ ठीक है अंदर वो लोग ठीक है वो लोग बोल रहा है कि हम लोग को कब निकाला गए निकालेगा यहां से तो हम उन लोग को तसल्ली के लिए बोले कि नहीं आप लोग को मतलब बहुत जल्दी निकाल लिया जाएगा काम also, authorities have not said what caused the 4.5 km tunnel to cave in, but the region is prone to landslides, earthquakes and floods. And amid the ongoing Israel-Hamas war, India's permanent representative to the UN, Ruchira Kamoj, on Monday said that New Delhi advocates immediate resumption of peace talks between Israel and Palestine, adding that the absence of a dialogue would only increase the risk of an escalation of violence. Speaking during a council meeting on Palestine, Kamoj reaffirmed India's unwavering commitment for establishing a sovereign independent and viable state of Palestine. She also noted that India is firm in opposing terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and is against violence. We are also firm, Mr. President, in our commitment to provide humanitarian aid to the people of Palestine and have already delivered 70 tons of disaster relief materials, including 17 tons of medicines and medical supplies in two tranches, and our humanitarian support will continue. Also, Israel announced war against Hamas after it launched terror attacks on October 7th and killed about 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and took around 240 people as hostage. And moving on, India's SJ Shankar on Tuesday held the 14th India-Australia Foreign Minister's Framework Dialogue with his Australian counterpart Penny Wong in New Delhi to boost bilateral cooperation. After the meeting, Jay Shankar said the strategic partnership is making great strides with frequent high-level engagements, growing trade, investment and economic cooperation being big contributors. The two leaders also exchanged perspectives on Indo-Pacific and West Asia. The meeting came a day after the two leaders held a 2 plus 2 dialogue along with Defence Ministers Rajnath Singh and Richard Marles. In a joint presser, Foreign Minister Wong emphasised India as a central and crucial country in the region. Moving on, ahead of general elections in Pakistan, PPP party chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has raised doubts over the electoral process and urged the election commission for controversy-free polls while issuing a warning that his party would not recognize the results if any interference was seen. He underscored that the utilization of public funds in billions of rupees would serve no purpose if the legitimacy of the election results was put into question. Pakistan has set February 8th for general polls across the country. The other main contender, former PM Nawaz Sharif's PMLN party, has also been holding meetings with politicos to strengthen its position ahead of the polls. The Baloch National Movement has flagged concern over rising cases of fake encounters and ethnic stereotyping by Pakistani forces in Balochistan seeking urgent global intervention. A report. 
A prominent activist of the Baloch national movement, Hakim Baloch, has accused Pakistani forces of abducting and killing three youths in a recent blast in Balochistan. He said the Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state while it continues to exploit their natural resources. The situation is not highlighted by the local media, forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. And just because of the basis of these ideas, one must not be abducted, one must not be tortured, one must not be killed. And if the killings are continued, the killings, the abductions, the tortures, if they are continuous, this means that the Pakistani state, the Pakistani establishment, the federal government of Pakistan, the so-called Balochistan government and the military and the security services of Pakistan are involved in a direct genocide in Balochistan. The BNM alleges that Pakistan repeatedly carries out such atrocities to instill fear and exert control over the Baloch people, who have been demanding independence from its occupation. And the number of dengue cases recorded in Bangladesh so far in 2023 have crossed the 300,000 mark amid the worst outbreak of the disease. The Directorate General of Health Services reported in the latest daily count the tally of infections this year has reached 302,452, while the death toll has surpassed 1,550, raising grave concerns by health officials. Experts have blamed a prolonged monsoon and rising temperatures, along with a lack of effective measures to kill the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the known carrier of the virus, for the outbreak. Without a specific vaccine or drug to treat dengue, health officials have pointed out vector surveillance. A close examination of how the disease is spreading is now needed year-round in Bangladesh. And persimmon, the national fruit of Japan, has been showing excellent results in improving income of farmers in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Several farmers in Anantanag district have taken up the production of the non-native fruit crop, which is giving them better results. The fruit-bearing capability of the trees within three to four years makes it an attractive option for those with limited land. A farmer said persimmon, also known as amlok, has the potential to contribute to the agricultural landscape of Kashmir and offer economic opportunities to the farmers. Its demand has been increasing day by day. डिमांड तो काफी इसकी है क्योंकि लोग जब जिस जिस लोगों ने लिया है अब दोबारा आ रहा है इसलिए कि इसके यार शुगर कंट्रोल हो रहा है वो लोग कह रहा है ये अमलू किसको बोलता है जापानी फल है जो अफगानिस्तान से लाया है किसी ने 20 साल पहले तो यहाँ पे अब हर हर जगह यहाँ पे मतलब अंतराक में आपको दिखाई द well, that's all in tonight's edition. It's the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.